This is a balsam poplar. You can see that it sheds the buds, what I call the stickies. And it also has the catkins, like that. And while this is not considered an actual cottonwood, it does also shed the white fluff. But you'll see here that this bark, while furrowed, is not the kind of bark that we're looking for for wood carving. So, let's go down to the river, and I'll show you what I think is a cross between balsam poplar, like this one, and plains cottonwood. And I'll show you the bark that that hybrid brings. Here's another beautiful example of balsam poplar trees. They're very common around here. Like I said, they're not really known for having good carving bark. Here's more of the buds, which I actually pick earlier in the season, and I soak in oil to make a salve with beeswax. That's really good for bug bites and a sore back and things like that. You can see why I call them stickies. These poplar buds are actually horrible to be parked under. They stain your vehicle and it's really hard to get that off. Ah, made it to the river. This stuff is necessary or the beavers would eat all of our trees. Here though, you can see this tree, this part of this tree, this trunk, is dying and um, the bark is starting to come away. So here, I believe, we're looking at a hybrid. It's either that or our balsam poplars get the thick bark when they're by the river just because they have their feet in the water. I found this map that shows the range for narrow leaf cottonwood, balsam poplar, and plains cottonwood. And balsam poplar is what is expected to be found in the South Calgary area where I was walking. You can see though that on the Bow River there are also areas of narrow leaf cottonwood and plains cottonwood. I've also read in some scientific journals that it's quite common for these trees to be hybrids. There is bark everywhere along this river. Some of it pretty awful. And some of it actually workable. Sometimes you can find some pretty amazing bark that uh, is actually driftwood. I look for places like this. Of course, you're going to find other things in there too. All kinds of garbage. As you can see here, these two trees were brought down by beavers. And that can often be a great place to look. As those trees die, they release their bark. 
That's pretty thick and it's solid. It's not punky at all. I can make a spoon out of that. You don't ever want to try and take the bark off of a living tree. You're best to find a standing dead if you can. Especially one of those ones that's maybe been snapped off in the storm and now it's been sitting for a year or two, usually two. And then the tree will begin to release the bark. It comes away very cleanly and you'll get really good pieces for carving that way. We can grow some pretty big trees along the river. Like I said, I think it helps to have the roots down in the water. These kind of trees are known also for being very flood tolerant. They also help root the bank and hold it when we do have floods. You can still find places like this and over here left over from 10 years ago when we had those floods. This area would have been all completely underwater during that time. You can see across the river beautiful riparian forests. We actually have a heron colony. Just, you can almost make it out over there. There's well over a dozen nests. And they hunt in the backwaters and the shallows along the river. That's how you know we have good fishing. A healthy riparian zone contains diverse plant species, aquatic and terrestrial wildlife. It helps to maintain water levels, temperature, and also prevent erosion. The poplar forests along the Bow River provide a foundation for that riparian forest ecosystem, a habitat that's occupied by a wide range of wildlife, including various large mammals and abundant numbers of birds. I'm in a willow thicket. Hopefully there's still a crossing up here reason I'm bringing you this way is because of those trees down there. Oh, of course it moves. Okay, is that going to hold me? <laughs> uh, Alright, here we go. You ready? Oh, we made it. There you go. That's the kind of standing dead we're looking for. And you can see the bark is coming away at the base. And sure enough, everywhere you look on the ground, And you can see how big the pieces are on that. There's some more on the ground. This stuff's a bit punky. I think this is an older standing dead, but let's see if I can get you out of the sun. There you go. Look at the size of that and it's all just ready to come away. Looks like this stump has been well picked over. So I'm walking along and I notice a piece like this. It was kind of buried in grass and I kicked it. <laughs> and you can see, that's actually a really decent piece. It's solid not punky or rotten at all. It's got some nice thickness to it. Take away these loose bits. 
And look at that. You're ready to do a tree spirit. What I do with pieces like this, if I'm not going to carve them right away, I like to fumigate it with some spray I got from the vet. And then I soak it and then I rinse it and dry it. Um, you don't want to store something like this in your house or in your shop um, without doing something to it or you're likely to end up with a bug problem. Here's a great example of a place to look for bark. I don't know if you can see it, right about there. A beautiful piece of bark floating out there. I don't really feel like swimming today. Here's another great place to look. Obviously when the water was higher. And sure enough, there's some nice pieces right here. Ah, oh, that one's a bit punky. Bit thin, but you can see there's lots of opportunities. Here's another great way to find some bark for carving. Find a tree that's been cut a long time ago. And watch out for bugs. Down underneath. There's a really nice piece right there. This one's not too bad. Let's pull that out and see what we got. There you go. So, you know, really not bad stuff considering I'm nowhere near the places where black cottonwood bark is very popular. Curving. Like, yeah, that's a decent piece right there. Remember how I struggled with this little log? Well, I just wasn't very observant because there's a much better way right up here. So for comparison, this is a piece from this area along the Bow River, Southern Alberta, Canada. These pieces are from Northern BC. You can see how they're quite a bit chunkier. And this piece here is from the West Coast of Canada. You don't find them this wide very often. Occasionally along the riverbank, you will find some exceptional pieces, even here in Alberta. <laughs> 